After a long hiatus, I'm finally back. And what, what, what better way to return to my channel than to tell you a story? It's a sad story, uh, but it's a, it's a life lesson story. One that has truly impacted me personally. But before we get into that, if you haven't know, met me already, my name is Jonathan. I go by Wonton here on YouTube. Either one works. You can refer to me one way or the other. I'm just your local layperson who loves to talk Bibles, theology, everything around Christian living. Though my core focus as of late has been Bible reviews. And just that's just because it's easy. It's much easier than setting up um, a topical video. So... Anyways, uh, we will go over this Bible as a review uh, because there are some things I'd love to talk about this Bible. It's the New King James Quintel from Schuyler and the Black Black Pearl Calfskin. And I'll talk about some things I like and some things that I wish they had changed. But overall, I love this Bible. And as the title and the thumbnail may have already spoiled, uh, yes, this Bible did get run over by a vehicle. Actually, probably multiple vehicles. And you can tell it's held up really well. I mean, the cover looks absolutely superb. The only thing not new about it um, is maybe this little crease here that you can tell the, the Bible had gotten folded over like that from the vehicles. And then I also tra trained the yap because a lot of the yap was mangled over the side of the text block some of it was trained some of it was brand new so i just decided to train the yap all the way around the spine looks virtually untouched i was actually very impressed with the stamping on the spine because a lot of skylers with their stamping can come out pretty blotchy or um, they're not printed super boldly some of the letters fade uh, even when getting them new but this looks really nice then you can see the back here. We've got a couple of scrapes, like one there and then two up there from the incident. But aside from that, I mean, look at that. I absolutely love the grain on this thing. It's still smooth like a rain jacket. It feels like a windbreaker, just not as abrasive. And the texture you can see, but you don't quite feel. You can feel the, uh, a little bit, especially if you are lucky enough to get one that's really textured but uh, generally it's going to be smooth overall and it's much more slippery in the hand than the goat skin i do really like the silver stamping especially on these darker bibles with more of a bluish hue so the cover is virtually unaffected once we get into the first page <laughs> of the bible however you can see here Initially, the first few pages do look really bent out of shape. So, yeah, this page in particular looks the absolute worst out of the bunch. Though the edge line seems to be intact. It doesn't appear to be coming up or anything like that, even when I pull up on it. So it is still glued very well and secure, as you can see there. Here's where my initial concerns pop up for this Bible. You can see here there's some uh, signatures loosening, especially when we get here to the, pre uh, the copyright page or near the copyright page. You can see the signatures are pulling away. Uh, the sewn binding is pulling away from the, the text block. So The saddest part about this story, I did get this Bible September 22nd, 2023, and the incident that occurred uh, was only within five days after buying this Bible, or actually receiving this Bible, I should say. And so, that's the saddest part about this, is I hardly had it for a week, and it already got ran over. So, what had happened was, as you can tell, I don't have the, the regular clamshell box this comes in. That's because this was inside the box when the incident occurred, and I had set my journal on top of it. Then I was loading some items into my car for a small group that I attend. And I had left this and the journal on top of it on top of my car. Went to go to my small group. Realized I totally forgot that I left these on top of my car. 
and I went back to see, of course, my journal had landed safely in a very not busy street uh, and was totally fine. It was actually tucked between two parked cars, so there's no way anyone would run it over unless one of the parked cars was leaving that day. However, this Bible didn't fall off my car until later onto the one of the busier roads in my city. And it was clearly run over multiple times. Box absolutely wrecked, so I threw that away. I usually don't throw boxes away, but this one I had to. And then this Bible was folded like this with the cover like that, and the pages were strewn all across. It looked horrendous. You can see here um, that it's cleaned up quite a bit. Um, the only pages that are wavy are these initial pages here. The gilting looks unaffected, but this was like completely brown from the tire marks. I just wiped it with my hand, my dry hand, and eventually came off. This is this part looks the absolute worst in regards to the wavy pages. You can see the top didn't the tops of the pages here at the beginning of the Bible didn't do as well. You can see where the signatures are pulling away a bit more when reference to the others. So this was also completely brown, but I was able to wipe it pretty clean with just my dry hand. So it actually doesn't look too bad. So at least we learned through me the very hard way that uh, the Black Pearl Bibles are, uh, all the calfskin Bibles ought to be very durable. So this will be a concern for me because I imagine that may tear away from sooner than initially anticipated and then the rest of the bible will follow suit but um overall i mean even if we go to the first page of genesis here it's really not that bad you can see the old testament page is pretty crinkled but it's certainly readable near the bottom of the page there's not no no real damage to make note of um and then you can see here similar pattern once we get into exodus it starts to get a little bit better that's around when um, the wrinkles start to fade away a bit you can see we've got this main wrinkle here that goes all across the old testament for the most part up until the proverbs there's some of the tire marks i couldn't get all the marks away with just my hand but most of them i was able to and the text itself is generally clean of the, the brown marks. You can see the corner there. I worked tirelessly to, to flatten out the pages, but the thing is paper is just really um, fragile, condensed, uh, yeah, thin wood that once you like fold it, it, you're breaking the fibers in the paper and it's virtually impossible to reverse it. Here in Leviticus, we can see just the single uh, crease fold across the middle of top of the page, but the remainder of the page basically looks brand new. Very similar story here on the other side of the page. Just one main crease across the top of the page, otherwise brand new. And then once we get into the New Testament, I mean, the pages are virtually brand new. And so... They look untouched. One thing I really like about this Bible, I, I love the the somewhat blue hue of the black pearl. Um, I think that just kind of comes out a bit more bluish in tint because of the blue accents, but it does seem to have uh, a lighter, like really dark gray look to it that, that goes really well with this dark navy liner and the dark navy end sheets. You can see this side of the Bible virtually untouched by the cars the spine is intact too it hasn't broken or anything like that so that's really good news um, i love the silver on this dark on the dark blue liner and on the dark black pearl calfskin uh, i think it accents really well the only thing i'd really change color scheme wise is this art gilt so as you can see here it's like this brighter, very vibrant blue, very shouty, uh, though I wish it was a, a darker blue. It doesn't have to be super dark. 
It can be like a navy art gilt, similar to what the New King James Shepherd does from Humble Lamb in both their black and the Sahara blue Bible. I really like that blue art gilt, and I think it would do really well on this Bible because it, it seems to have like a dark, like stormy ocean vibe to it. And then suddenly we have like bright blue beach vibes, uh, like uh, the blue of the sky suddenly as if it's a clear day as the art kill. And I don't think that really matches the aesthetic. But uh, that's just me personally. You guys can let me know what you think. Uh, what thing, one thing I do really like, let's go to like, yeah, Mark 10 should do. I love how the red, the red letter and also the red accents for the chapter numbers. I love how it contrasts with the blue, especially the dark navy liner. I think to divide, diversify uh, the color scheme to have more than just um, a bunch of red on a Bible, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think one of my least favorite combos was the green goat skin with the red liner because there's just too much red with the red ribbons, red under gold, and the red, um, yeah, the red letter for the words of Christ. But with the blue accents, I think it does really well in this Bible. Um, a couple more things. We'll just go to the back here. The concordance. That's one thing I'd like to get rid of here in these Skylar Bibles. I don't really care too much to use a concordance, at least one that's attached to the Bible. So why not just make it a little thinner? I, I love my my thin Bibles. Though the Quintile does a great job remaining relatively thin. And then the Skylar maps that we're always used to. I will say, I don't have any complaints about this Bible laying flat now that it's been run over by a few cars. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it does really well, even all the way at Genesis 1, in case you wanted to see that. Of course, Revelation does fine because you have a whole concordance to weigh the pages down or to weigh the hinge down. But you can see here, even right here, it's, it's laying completely flat really does help that there's a really sizable inner gutter margin here that pulls the text out of the gutter. I just love the Quintel line. The PSQ, the regular size Quintel. If they came out with a mid-size Quintel, I think I'd have my perfect New King James Bible. Not in the sense that it'd be my favorite textbook of all time, because I, I do really like single column. But um, the unfortunate thing about single column Bibles is that the form factor of the Bible the size and the thinness doesn't feel as good as, say, like a thin line or a PSQ or a Pitminion or uh, those other kinds of thin Bibles that are really easy to hold in the hand. Even the Quintel, I would say, is much more manageable to hold in the hand and it feels really nice in one hand when compared to something like Crossway's Heritage, which is my absolute favorite text block. Yeah, anyways, that's my sad story. <laughs> about how my Bible got ran over by a multitude of cars. Guys, just put your Bibles in your backpacks. Put it in your purses. Put it in your messenger bags. Don't be carrying them in hand unless you have no other option. Uh, that's what I've been doing from here on out. I carry it in my, uh, carry my Bible now in my little work bag. The Bible of choice now. Um, alongside my new traveler's journal which I'll, I'll be reviewing that here soon um, but now i've been using this dark green goatskin personal size quintel and just carrying it in my bag and there's no way i would forget a backpack because it just always stays in my back on my back so uh yeah and at least if it if my bag got ran over there's little chance that this bible will be as damaged as this bible here but anyways um yeah guys thank you so much for the support on my videos even to this day i do get comments on a lot of my old posts and so i appreciate everyone who's watching and i, I hope to continue to do more of these videos at least once per week starting this week and so i appreciate all that you guys do for me i uh, hope to see you soon